I'm going to call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone to the uh, May meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, town staff if that would be Shannon, if you would just read the, the roll call to see who's present. Sure. Uh, Carrie Callahan. Present. Johnny Carrier. Present. Uh, Ron Llewellyn. Uh, we haven't seen Ron yet. Sarah Nadim. Here. Rob Phillips. No, we haven't seen Rob yet either. John Schoenhorn. Present. John Brockelman. Mm -hmm. No John yet. Uh, Harry Marsh. Yes. And Steve Walsh. Present. Thank you. All right. So um, let's we'll we'll start by having the secretary read the notice for the public hearing. If anyone in the next minute or so before that is completed appears, we'll note that for the record. And then I'll, if not, I will appoint uh, both all, present alternates to replace missing regular members. But if I could ask Commissioner Callahan to read the notice, please. Town of Farmington Zoning Board of Appeals. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold an online public hearing on Monday, May 17, 2021 at 7 p.m. on the following application. Jason Levitt op application for modification to variance to install fence instead of five Arbor Vitae as previously conditioned at 21 Poplar Hill Drive R80 zone. Interested parties are encouraged to participate in this online public hearing. The link to this meeting may be found on the Town of Farmington website at www.farmingtonct.org slash about us slash calendar meetings. A copy of this proposal is available online at www.farmington-ct.org slash government slash zoning board of appeals or by calling planning department at Farmington Town Hall. Okay. And um, has anyone appeared, uh, Ms. Rutherford, for the meeting besides the people whose names already called? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, we're really oh. the same. Okay, so I'm going to appoint Commissioner March to uh, replace uh, absent Commissioner Llewellyn, and I'm going to appoint Commissioner Walsh to replace absent Commissioner Phillips. And as a preliminary matter, before I uh, turn this over to the applicant, I'm just going to say that as a preliminary matter, it was brought to my attention that the, uh, the sign that was placed at, uh, at the property uh, an announcing and notifying individuals of the upcoming uh, meeting did not ex explicitly or specifically conform with town regulations. It was a homemade sign. However, as chair, I'm going to make the determination, which could is subject to being overruled by the rest of the board if they feel that it's appropriate. I'm going to say that it substantially complies with the regulations it had all the important information. I think members saw what the sign, handwritten sign looked like. Um, and in addition, because of the limited hours uh, that town hall is open, I'm also gonna s say that that would be another reason why I would allow this to say it substantially complies and therefore we'll proceed with the hearing. Having said that, I do know that under the, the rules that if anyone on the board disagrees, and wants to have a motion on that and overrule my decision, they're welcome to do so. And I'll open it up for the next uh, 15, 20 seconds to see if anyone does object to my decision on that issue. I'm okay with it. I'll take your lead, John. All right. Anyone disagree with that, want to be heard on that? Hearing no objection, then we will move forward. Mr. Levitt, uh, I see that you're on this uh, on this hearing. I'm going to turn this over to you, and you can uh, make your presentation, please. Sure. So uh, one of the conditions of the variance that I received was to put five arborvites uh, pretty much at the closest point of the new addition garage between um, the garage and the abutting property at 27 Poplar Hill. I planted six total arborvitaes. Um, 
and all, all of them have died. I did three, and then I tried again with three more, and they all died. There's not enough shade without me cutting more trees down, which I really don't want to do. Um, and the soil is just completely impacted with ledge. So um, that's what uh, we're looking to have a substitution for the stockade fence, just in that uh, 20 foot area um, that the uh, trees were supposed to be placed at. All right, um, is there anything else you wish to add? Um, I did contact my, my abutting neighbor, the only neighbor that, that sees everything. And he did write a letter to the town stating that he has no objections and he's fine with the, uh, with the fence. And we, and we appreciate it as stationary too. I'll just note for the record, so. All right, um, anything else you wish to add? Um, no, not this time, sir. Okay, and I'll just note for the record before I turn it over to questioning that the, the, uh, the board on December 17, 2018, as you noted, did approve the variance to build your garage with the condition that at that time had been requested by your adjacent neighbor that you plant arborvitae. So I'm just noting that for the record. And this is a variance on that appro previously approved variance. Am I correct in what you're asking for? Yes, you are. Okay. So I'll turn it over to members. I would ask questions last as chair. So I'm gonna start with Commissioner Callahan. Do you have any questions? I know. Uh, Commissioner Carrier. No questions at the time. Commissioner Nadim. No questions. Commissioner Marsh. Is, is this because the trees didn't make it? I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, I see the fence and I see one tree down. What's the purpose in having the trees if you already have a fence? Do you want to answer that, Mr. Levin? I, I think for historical purpose, I can answer that question. There was not a fence there. The original proposal was, as approved, was to plant a group of uh, arborvitae because these pictures don't show up, but the garage is within the side setback, which I don't know if we have a picture of the garage here. Well, no, I've got the original plan, but here's- We don't have a fo uh, image of it, right? Uh, so- I didn't send anything recently, no. Okay. So, um, Commissioner Marsh, I'm just indicating that in lieu of the arborvitae, Mr. Levitt plant, uh, 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 constructed a fence, and uh, this is now to seek a variance to conform the um, side yard. You can see, I think, from this picture, from the new garage there to the side of the, of the um, SUV to the area that's being designated where the fence is, and the arborvitae, I guess we're going to go in that general location. So I don't know if that answers your question, Mr. Marsh, uh, for purposes of this hearing. Okay. All right, do you have any other questions? I would just, I would just like to clarify though, uh, that, that we have specific language that as far as the, the deed and the requirements are for, it's approximately a 20 foot span. In the, in the meantime, I erected a fence from forward of that all the way up that side to our usable property. But I don't want that to be reflected as a requirement forever to have to have the fence up the entire property line. Well, uh, uh, I, we'll wait till I get to me about that. But um, if you would, uh, I, I'm gonna ask Commissioner Walsh, do you have any questions first? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I just, if, if I could just clarify, the whole purpose of requiring the arborvitae was to act as kind of a buffer to your next door property. Am I understanding that you do not want to have no. a fence be a requirement? You want to have there be no, uh, uh, please, do you, do you want to have there be no uh, requirement of, of shielding this uh, extension to the uh, next door property, even no. though that was a condition. No, you're incorrect. You're, you're not understanding what I'm trying okay. to convey. 
So Please. I'm trying to get an approval to have the fence in lieu of the five arborvitaes. Okay. The area of the five arborvitaes is a maximum of about 15 feet is the span on the map. So all I'm asking for is the specification to require that that same section where the property abuts the closest requires a fence, but only like three sections of fence would accomplish that. And I don't know for the future of perpetuity, if someone that lives in 21 Poplar Hill wants to have a fence all the way up the property. I do, and I'm happy with it there, but I don't wanna scar or permanently alter the requirement to, to go above and beyond what, what we were looking to do. That's all. I, un I understand, and I'll note when I did a site visit, you did put the similar kind of stockade fence on the other side of your property as well. I noticed on yep. the north side, it also has that kind of fence. So the variance is to have a length of fence that you said is about 20 or the proposed addition is how how much of the addition encroaches on the side yard setback? Not even five full feet. And it's only in one section of that corner of the garage. All right. But it's and it's how many uh, stories the, that area there? Probably one and a half, I guess you would consider it. Okay, so um, how many sections of, how long is each section of stockade fence? Uh, 10 feet. All right, so if we, you said three, if we were to uh, grant your variance with the condition that there be at least 30 feet of stockade, of 30 feet of fencing, opaque fencing, whatever it is, if you wanna change it, that you'd be okay with that. Is that my understanding? Absolutely. Okay. So just, right. and, and I just want to make sure that it's specified in that location, which is yes. a buddy garage, not out in the backyard. I, I think we understand your, your request in this variance. Did anything that I uh, brought up raise any of the questions? Does any commissioner want to ask anything else? No. no. All right. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in favor of the applicant? from the public that is. So if, if anyone that has called in would like to speak in, in favor or has a question regarding this application, raise your hand using the Zoom function and you'll be acknowledged to address the commission with any questions or comments that you have. Again, you need to raise your hand using the Zoom function if you want to address the commission. Anything, Shannon? Do you see anybody? Uh... No, there's no no hands raised, and there are no comments in our chat. Okay. There's no chat, no questions, no hand raised. All right. Does anyone wish to speak either neutrally or in opposition to the uh, applicant? Again, if you wish to, to speak or ask a question regarding this matter, we ask that you raise your hand using the Zoom function and you'll be acknowledged to address the commission. Any, anything, Shannon, anybody? Uh... No, there's no, no hands raised. And again, no, nothing in chat or nothing in the question and answer. Okay, then I'll declare the hearing closed and we'll go immediately to uh, discussion and, and deliberations. Um, and I'll entertain a motion from members of the uh, board. I'll make a motion to approve the application of Jason Levitt for modification to a previously issued variance to install 30 feet of fence instead of five arborvitaes as previously conditioned at 21 Poplar Hill Drive, R80 zone. Do we hear a second? I'll second, John Carrier. All right, discussion. Well, so, will somebody at least indicate for the record the uh, the hardship that would uh, up, be a basis for proving the... Uh, and I will, just um, since it was my motion, the basis being that the applicant tried to comply with the condition that we attached to a grievance in... Two, uh, grievance, I'm sorry, uh, to a variance in 2018 
and has tried twice, and there's no sense to keep to make him keep sacrificing our variety in an area that they won't grow, especially in the circumstance. Uh, the, so the hardship would be the, in part the pointlessness of the activity, combined with the fact that the neighbor is fine with the stockade fence that is presently providing the buffer that the arborvitae would have provided. All right, does anyone else have any comments or uh, remarks they wish to make at this time? Commission members only, obviously. Now, I would ask uh, if, uh, Shannon, could you call the roll as a roll call vote, please? Uh, certainly. Uh, Carrie Callahan? Aye. Johnny Carrier? Aye. Sarah Nadim? Aye. John Schoenhorn? Aye. Harry Marsh? Yeah, aye. And Steve Walsh? Aye. Okay, the uh, motion carries. The variance is approved. And uh, good luck, Mr. Levitt, with uh, your property there, so. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye now. Thanks. Um, the next item on the agenda is the um, ZBA bylaws. Uh, if you recall at the last meeting, we did discuss them, but I note since then the public notice has at least added uh, information uh, that was uh, uh, that would help individuals get onto the online Zoom uh, process. And I recall that when we ended the, me ended the discussion, uh, uh, you, I think, Shannon, you were going to ask the, uh, the town land use attorney, Mr. DiCrescenzo, whether or not we could actually allow either the public or or applicants, not necessarily commissioners, but applicants to appear uh, remotely in the future, even if, as it now appears, the governor is going to lift uh, all uh, uh, all restrictions on in-person gatherings. Yeah. Other than we're we're still in a hold a bit of a holding pattern on that to see exactly where everything lands. So um, what happened last week is the legislature extended the governor's executive order powers through July, is my mm -hmm. understanding. And uh, the current anticipation is that the governor is going to extend the uh, meet, the ability for land use commissions to have online meetings through July. We're waiting to hear official word on that before um, midnight on Wednesday. Um, and then again, this is something that's still in the works. So um, while I've had extensive conversations with attorney DiCrescenzo regarding this, because it's impacting pretty much everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis with all our boards. Um, the, the general thought is that the legislature is going to end with uh, allowing land use boards to have a hybrid model, which would accommodate what your request is. But until we get there, we're kind of our carts a little bit before the horse at this particular point in time with respect to that. So we've got to see where this ends and then we can better decide how we can react to it. And if we need to make a modification to the bylaw based on where this ends once the executive orders are lifted and if the legislature makes any um, permanent changes to the, the statute to allow a hybrid format moving forward. Um, do you know whether any town uh, commissions or boards are meeting in person yet, or at least anticipating doing so in the next month or so? There's been some discussion on the um, the listserv with some com with some municipalities, um, but there has been uh, nothing that I'm seeing that is concrete at this particular point in time. So there's been discussion about how they're doing it, talking about legal notices and uh, shifting if, if uh, like a hearing started under Zoom and under the executive order, but now it's continuing outside an executive order and things of that nature. So there's been a lot of discussion 
Um, mm -hmm. I can tell you that uh, Farmington Town Hall is going to now finally open to the public uh, come next Monday, like officially open to the public. So we've been allowing public in for, you know, by appointment or to the, you know, the tax office and to the clerk's office, because um, obviously those recordings and those elements had to continue. Um, but for our office, for building, engineering, and planning, everything has been by appointment. And we're going to, all the doors will be open come next Monday. Um, the town council has started to meet in person, but not with the public. So they have done a hybrid. So if the commission wanted to, we could start, you know, there, after Monday, there's nothing preventing us from meeting in person if folks want to. Um, I need to work with our IT group to get it to work down in the council chambers. So if this is something that everyone or the majority wants to do in June, then you know, we can, and I just, I need to figure out how to do this. Um, uh, and before I ask other members, um, are there ag possible agenda items already for the June meeting? Two. Yeah. Two, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, All right. two, there's, yeah, there's two. So I would like people's views on whether or not they feel comfortable returning to in-person meetings, at least with regard to the commission members, even if the public is not yet going to be allowed to attend. How do people feel about that? I'm comfortable with it. Well, I think we're all probably vaccinated at this point, right? I'm comfortable with it. Does anyone feel uncomfortable that wants to at least express their view? Because, uh, you know, things are getting back to normal, alleged, you know, I, I put quotation marks up with that. But if things are getting back to a new normal, um, uh, somehow I think that having hearings where we're actually meeting is probably um, a good thing, but that's just my view. Does anyone ha have any objections? Again, we have to wait to see what things are like the next few weeks with things opening up. Does anyone uh, have any strong objections to if we're moving in, in that direction? Anybody here? I realize we're not, not everybody's here, but anybody have any comments they want to make now? John, as long as, as long as we've had our shots, uh, I think at this point, what the governor said about next Wednesday of opening up everything, that uh, I definitely prefer to do this personally. Okay. All right. So um, we'll just see how that goes. But and Shannon, you and I will talk maybe before the notices go out for the next meeting, maybe uh, by the end of the month or so. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, in the next week or so, because uh, yeah. notices have to publish the 15 days ahead. So. Right. Um, and, and what's the date of the next uh, June meeting? When is it? June 14th. June 14th. Okay, so yeah, we would have to do it in the next week, but you know, as long as you don't mind being in the same room as the rest of us, I think we'll. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, nope, it'll uh, be nice to have everybody together. Okay, yeah, so, let's, so let's move on to the minutes. Has everyone received a copy of the draft minutes? Yes. Uh, okay, um, I'll entertain a motion with regard to the minutes of the April 20th meeting. Again, don't all be shy, you know, let's, let's, how, would anyone like to make a motion regarding the approval of the meet, of the minutes of last I'll Wednesday? make it. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Sarah, that's you, correct? Yep. Okay, uh, any discussion about the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All, all opposed? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. I will now end. Sorry. I'm right. I wasn't at the last meeting. Okay. You'll abstain. Okay, Johnny abstains. Or is Commissioner Carrier abstains. So um, the only other item on this month's agenda is adjourning. And I'm wondering if anyone would like to make a motion with regard to that. So moved. Second. Right. 
<laughs> all right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All, all opposed? Aye. Have a great Memorial Weekend, everybody, and uh, we'll see everyone in June, if not before that. Don't forget to vote on what's the date of the hearing, Johnny? June 3rd. June 3rd. June 3rd. Yeah, don't forget. Take care.